You're on OnlyFans. You haven't seen that? Do you get naked? Well, I'm on there naked, but it's not like I got naked for OnlyFans. Hi there, folks. I'm Josh Flagg, I think. Um, <laughs> we are here today doing an interview on Sonia Morgan. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Sonia, just give me your own intro. I can't. Well, What's, I, give me the I just would like to say, hello, I'm Sonia Morgan from New York City. And I'm here to visit my dear friend, Josh. And I just was going to sleep all day and then drag myself to the pool. But no, here I am with my lampshades on, my face talked, ready to go. What are we doing? OK. OK, what's the subject I want to know where you started, where you came from. Let's start all the way in the beginning, before the housewives. OK, I lived upstate New York between Albany and Saratoga. My family came over the. Uh, state line of Massachusetts and uh, then I moved to Manhattan to go to school for marketing and fashion at FIT and I was there for wig stock and I modeled in the early days at Studio 54. Oh okay. So that's where I learned all the you know fun things that go on in New York and wanted to live there and study fashion and marketing. And so what was your plan after your getting what was your plan? Well, the plan was once I got to Manhattan and I finished school, then I wanted to travel. So I went to Europe. I was living in Italy and then in France. What were you doing there? I started out modeling because it was a great way to travel. And then I started doing luxury consulting back in New York. What were you consulting? I worked for the Olympic Towers and uh, Trump, you know, at Trump it Towers and also the Plaza. Most people know I worked at the Plaza Hotel. And then I was working with a nice uh, a, a restaurant on 54th Street called Beach. I went across I the Beach. They had one here too. It was amazing on 54th. Yeah. And I took all my clientele across the street to open San Pietro. That's when I met my ex-husband. At the restaurant. He came in because he used to go to their other restaurant. Okay. And I didn't give him a table. He didn't have a reservation. He said, "Well, I go to their other restaurant." And I'm sa I said, "Sorry." The rent on this street, 54th Street, we're in the center of the universe, Mr. Morgan. I do not have a table. <laughs> okay. See, we're getting a glimpse into the real Sonia that we don't ever he hear. He, we, don't, we never hear these stories, so this is really interesting. So he walks in, and, 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 and you won't give him a table. And what happens next? So then he goes up to the owners, and he's like, you know, I can't believe this woman. And they were like, forget it, you know, she, she, she runs the show here, she brings in the clientele, and we, you know, four brothers from Naples, they couldn't do anything for Mr. Morgan. He left. The next time he came in with no reservation, he brought his son and said it's his birthday, and it was 11.30. I said, well, I'll serve you at the bar. Okay, and, and then what? And then he just fell in love with me. So. Because you can imagine, being J.P. Morgan's grandson, and grandson of John Adams, John Quincy Adams, and all that. Everyone blew smoke up his ass. So, okay, so then when do you guys get married? Okay, so we knew each other for seven years, and he always would kind of hint at going on a date, and I was like, no way, you know. It's just, it's just never. Uh, and he just didn't give up. He had stamina, and he would call the other guys I know. So he did send me a nice letter on his stationery, Caritas Island, his private island in Connecticut, which was kind of a nice cachet, and I have Caritas to admit. Caritas Island? Yeah, he has this private island, he still lives there. He wrote me a nice letter on his stationery, and I have to admit, when I ran into him in St. Farts on his yacht, he looked really handsome in his shorts. Plus he had, you know, 14 and crew behind him. Mm, yes. It looks, it, it's sexy. Okay. Smarts, power, or a turn on. So that's that. Finally, he sent the letter and the flowers and uh, expressed his feelings for me. And we went on a date and he asked me to marry him that night. You had never slept with him? God, no. There's people you sleep with and there's people you marry. You know that. Wait. On the first date. But you guys had never fucked? No! Who asked somebody to marry them? I, I was wearing our get. He brought me. A, he asked me what color stone I wanted that night. I said a yellow diamond, and he said we've never had a yellow diamond in the family. I said great, 
and I picked out a nice four carat near perfect, which is impossible to find in a, in a yellow diamond. You still have it? <laughs> no, someone stole it. Like maybe one of you know, I don't know. Somebody that comes in the house or whatever. So <laughs> uh, after my divorce, it was a shit show. Uh -huh. So anyhow, I wanted a four carat, not bigger, so I could still garden. So then we were married for a couple of years, and we were uh, on the boat in St. Bart's. We were having a party for, I don't know, 350 people for New Year's. So it was December of 1999, New Year's Eve, and this Israeli couple, you probably know them, they're here, they're here in Beverly Hills and Israel and everywhere, Sharona and Lorenzo. I know you know them. So they're on the boat, and they said, you guys love each other so much. You've been married for a couple of years. And I had a poodle, Milu. And they were like, you should have a kid. You have so much to share. Being parents is such a great thing. And so we had sex before dinner on New Year's Eve. And first try, we got pregnant. Hold on, let's just reverse. You're telling me that you had never slept with him, and the first time you slept with him... No, we were you... married at this point. I've had sex with him before, but we didn't do, you know, freestyle. Okay. Now, tell me what you've been doing during the pandemic to keep busy. Well, I went to Palm Springs to have some colonics and green juice, <laughs> and it was quite a thing right after I had my face pulled up. That was February. It's, by the way, nice to meet you. I feel like this is the first time we've ever yep. met. I know, with the haircut and you the face. You do look great. Thank you. You do, too. I love your skin. It's beautiful. I used all your products upstairs, so I should be looking good soon. Fantastic. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, so I was out there in Palm Springs, but they said, okay, after a week, everyone had to get out for insurance reasons because of COVID. So, okay, I moved to a cute little place, not even, you know, five minutes away. And I stayed there from February to June. You were in Palm Springs from February or, to June? Yeah. Why didn't you just tell me? That's like 10 miles away from here. Why didn't you call me? <laughs> Everybody says that and they get so mad at me. We were in a pandemic. Is this the same time when like on the Housewives and they like nobody knew who you were? They never know where I am when we're not filming. Off season, I'm into my health kick and I am a recluse, as you know. You're a recluse? You are like the complete opposite of a recluse. <laughs> That's when I come to your charity events or I'm filming. Okay. When I'm not doing that, like when you got the big award for the Jewish people of all of less, what was that Jewish award that you got? The, the Jewish home for the aging. Beautiful. The Jewish people of Los Angeles. Oh, but everyone was there. It was like a thousand people. I said all the people of Los Angeles. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> You're, I, good to know you were but in I was, California for I was there. six months. I didn't even know you were here. I know, but I didn't tell anybody. Even Nikki can tell you. She called. A lot of people called, and I just was reclusive. Tell me about the new cast of the show. Okay. Tell me about Ebony. I okay. want to know about well, her. Well, you're skipping over Leah, who this will be only her second season. Okay, tell me about so Leah first. So Leah came on last season, and she hadn't uh, had a drink in nine years. Hmm. So she started drinking, of course, with us because, you know. Because she met you. Yeah, we drove her to drink, as they say. And then uh, this season, she came back, and everyone's going to be interested to see her this season not drinking. Hmm. And she's converting to Judaism. Uh, a ju Jude what? It, Judaism. What? Judaism? Is that a word? Judaism? Judaism. Judaism. Okay, got it. <laughs> yes, so she is now. Well, my heart's in the right place. She is converting to Judaism. To Judaism? Yes. Interesting. And why is she doing that? I don't know. She's Irish Catholic. Her family wasn't thrilled at first, but recently on Watch Mountains Live with Andy Cohen, she said that they have accepted it now. She wanted some structure in her life. Uh, and she went back to AA or whatever to not drink any longer. And so this season we have Luann not drinking, her not drinking. So I had to pick How up the boring. slack. I know, I had to pick up the slack. Yeah, that would have been really hard. So <laughs> that should be really hard for you. Yeah, well, I, I don't drink off season, as you know, except when I'm with you or a couple other friends. A <laughs> couple <laughs> other <People>. friends. <laughs> half the state of New York. Well, I'm not happy with that scale upstairs, I'll tell you, because I just spent three weeks in Mexico drinking coconuts and eating salad, and I'm the same weight I was when I left New York. Huh. With no alcohol. I mean, how did that happen? Because you, you probably ate a lot more. Yeah, I ate a lot of food, but normally, normally the weight comes right off, so I don't know. I don't Interesting. Know. All right, now tell me about Ebony. <laughs> okay, Ebony is the newest girl. She's amazing, she's smart, beautiful, on a mission, 
on an assignment. To What's the mission? Spread, well, Black Lives Matter. Mm. And um, she and I connected right away. I just love her. She's great. You're going to see this season, it's a whole different season. I say it's a slap in the face. It's then introspection and then growth. Intro what? Introspection. Introspection? I said introspection. I, oh. What do you say? Is that a word? When you look inside, it's introspection. introspection. You're not used to me having a vocabulary. Yeah, no, I'm just not used to you. Yeah, okay. Well, anyhow, this season is about introspection and then growth. Growth. So think Luann and Ramona. So when are you guys going to like fight with each other? That's Well, really we what... fight and that's how we grow. We fight over who knows more about being woke. Like we're getting on the woke wagon. The woke wagon. Uh, not, we're trying to, you Is know, come like to grips wagon? of, uh, you know, what do you call that? Uh, you know, just come to grips that we are very lucky and we should be gracious and feel other people's pain. Okay. So what's the exciting part of the season going to be? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Somebody walking in poop and us talking about sex and somebody going naked. What about sure. a good fight? I had a fight. I actually smashed my Todd's bag. You know Todd's. Do you even wear Todd's? I mean, like, I, Todd's, I mean, does anyone like, wear anywhere? Yeah, I when do. I'm in, like, the East I, Coast yeah. and, like, Nantucket. Yeah, yeah, East Coast is where I live. So I took my I Todd's bag in Salem and smashed it into the glass. That's in the trailer. I've never seen you get We angry. went to Salem. I don't usually, but I've been working out with Martin. Boxing with Leah and Ebony, and he's telling me to come out and, and break fight for things? myself. Yeah, and break things if I must, but I didn't hurt the girl. Oh, okay. And the glass said break an emergency. Oh. That's where the fire extinguisher Right, was. yes, yes, yes. What is your project of the moment? <laughs> Excuse me. What is your project of the moment? Well, right now I just have my shoes back in stock, you know, those slippers with the crest. Yeah. They would look good on you, by the way. What size are you? Nine and a half. Okay. That, ten. So, I, so if you're a 10, you would order a 12 from me. A nine is an 11. Men do wear my slippers. Oh, they're women's. They're women's, but I'm oh, making I men buy them. I, I, I'm i desperate. So, Tell, uh, yeah. What happened with Century 21? Century 21, as soon as I started working with them as their chief lifestyle officer, and I had my clothes starting, you know, 15 stores. I was already in three stores, you know, rolling it out. Huge orders, doing well, selling out. The best thing they ever had on their website, best selling, and then they go bankrupt. Don't blame me because, you know, it was because of the pandemic. Well, they they didn't mean, get their $460 million insurance payment. Now that that's done, what's our next project? Okay, so I'm working on the shoes, my fashion collection, my, my perfume. Um, perfume? Well, I've had the unisex perfume now for four or five years. Really? I never sent you a bottle? No, you've never given me one thing in our relationship. <laughs> I did send you an orchid or something once. Come no. on. I guess I did. No, I mean, never. I, I, you, I, I told you, to... you bought me a burger you know once what? at Carl's Jr. Here's the thing with you. Whenever I send you like a little thank you You've gift, never you sent me know. anything. No one even... <laughs> You can't. That, you no never, one tells you because you get so much shit. You get so, so many gifts. You have so many tchotchkes. Look, you've got like this. What is this? That's like a, eleven thousand dollars. Put it down. Okay, it's a frog skeleton in gold. It's Tony Ducat. Okay, these flowers are real. Look, you you're, just destroyed. You're just, what's that, Lalique? I mean, you have so much stuff that you wouldn't even know if I sent something. By the way, is this real? Yes, it's real, and please okay, don't I'll touch it. You broke my... everything in the house since you got here. I'm sorry I broke the door on your rolls today. It's fine, and don't worry, just really add it to the my bill. Fault. And um, I don't know why the washing machine doesn't work anymore. It worked the first two times I used it, now it doesn't, I don't know. Else. And the coffee machine is all jammed up now. I don't know what happened. I used to run a household very well. I, I cannot know. possibly <laughs> imagine that. So do you ever get scared, like what's your retirement? Plan. Yeah, like I'm one step from being on a subway shaking a can. Do you get scared? scared? You're always so nonchalant and everything. It's like there must be a scale. Like, do you ever get scared? And you just don't express your feelings. I don't express it because I don't want to drop my crap on other people. But uh, I live in the moment. But I do have a five-year plan. I, I mean, I work very hard. People don't get that about me. They don't understand because I act so silly and right. slaps. Yeah, there must be an insecurity Sonya. or a, like there must be an. We're getting really yeah. like an insecurity yes. and a nervousness all the time, right? Well, yeah, when I went on Real Housewives in New York City, it was because, you know, that Chapter 11 reorganization cost me $13 million. And the first thing you think is, how am I going to make back some of that? Right. My lifetime earnings. Uh, and everything I had in the bank at that point, that was gone in divorce lawyers, uh, you know, the Chapter 11 reorganization lawyers. It was ridiculous. I had 35 lawyers. So I managed that, managed the show. My daughter, as you know, is a gem. Right. She's all set. 
She's sad, so yeah, but I guess you don't really have to worry because like at the end of the day, was your daughter gonna let you go homeless? No. I'm not gonna let my daughter take care of I have a healthcare proxy that says pull the plug. I mean, the last thing I want is people waiting on me in a hospital or God forbid, you know, Ramona Singer spoon feeding me. That, it, you know, I'm like paralyzed. Ugh. I mean, no. Uh, can that, you imagine? Can you imagine? Oh. I, I love how driven you are and you're living the moment, which is great because if you worry, not, and worrying's not gonna do you any good. And I have my Sonia Sangria. And you always have a backup plan. You have so many friends. I mean, like, if you ever go broke, you just come live with us. I come live with you and, you know, do garden. God, I and... hope she never Well, actually, broke. you have a few guest house back there that I didn't see yet. Right. I haven't even seen the rest of this house. You know what? Things are not broken over there. Okay. So I think yeah. we'll just keep you where you are. Okay. Um, okay, let me ask you this. So how many seasons have there been of Real Housewives? So we are in season 13. I came in the first year when We're they had season two season 13 seasons. in my show, too. Two, yeah. Yeah, they had two, two, two seasons in the first year. What year the did pilot was like six what episodes. What year did we meet? We met a long time ago. Wait. Do you know how young we were and how cute when we would go out together? Oh, my God. Wait, but what season would that have been when we met? Well, I started season 13. I, I started season three. When did you start? Season two. Season two and you're in your 13th season. Okay, so we met right away. We were on a Bravo thing. You and I were eating lunch with the crew. We didn't want to be with all the celebs. We didn't like celebs. the people. Yeah, yeah. we weren't interested in them. And we fell in love. Yeah, and then you and I stuck started to do fashion and travel together. And I stuck a Q-tip up your pussy. Yeah. Yeah. And a that? Parliament cigarette in my ear. That was fun. My mother never got over that visit to mm -hmm. New York. She's like, what are you doing? I had doing? a Rolex once on my arm and I stuck it in your <laughs> And my hand came out, but the Rolex didn't. <laughs> That's just the way I roll. Yeah. But I do remember you at the house. My mother's like, what is going on with him upstairs? And I'm like, nothing, Mom. He's gay. And she's you have like, a mother? My mother was in the house when you were there. I never even heard you talk about your mom? mother. No. She's, she looks very young. You probably thought she was an intern. I don't know. Where is she? She was at the townhouse when you were there one night. Where is she now? They all live. They moved to Tennessee. Better taxes. They have horses and livestock and chickens and eggs and really? gardens. Really? Yeah, um, my my sister still has a place in Pauling, but the taxes were so. You have a sister? High. I have two sisters. Where? Are, how can we never? Have they ever been on the show? Oh, they, never think, heard... they think New York City is for crazy people. They well, think uh, the know. show is crazy. Oh, you know. They're religious. They're religious. They're devout. You were born devout. Yes. Very and Catholic. This explains so many things. Yeah, yeah I know. You went out with flying colors when you came out of that stage. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, interesting. my brother's a deacon. My sister is the Sunday school teacher. My mom goes three times a week. No, I, I mean, they're very... We don't have alcohol at How the dinner I table. Like, do other people know? I feel like you were telling me things that people don't know. Like, do people know that? I don't think people know that. Have you ever talked about that? Has anyone ever asked you in an interview, like, about your family? Um, I'm trusting you're going to edit this nicely, so maybe I tell you things I don't tell other people. But I have told you some things. You know some things that we're not going to. But that's about. interesting. I feel like, no. I'm saying not saying that. I'm just saying like these are simple questions. I feel like nobody ever asks you that. Like no, I never. You know, where's your mom? Where's your dad? Where do they come yeah. from? What do you? So so I go you... every year to Nashville, either Thanksgiving or Christmas. Um, one of my sisters is, you know, um, I can't tell you, but D.C. Virginia. So I go there and see her. Are you close? Yeah, I'm very close to my family, even though it's sort of like my best friends. I don't see them all the time or talk to them all the time. But and do they when we like are watching together, the housewives? Are they no, 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 they, they, they don't, don't watch it. They don't watch it, right? They're just like, they're like uh -uh. that's craziness. Okay, right. So my family, the tr well, I don't like to mention the name either, but the family started with a nail company, you know, hundreds of years ago, Massachusetts, and then they went into lumber, chicken feed, um, you know, paint, sapple and paint. Uh, Anderson windows and doors and my father had a golf course and he would build estates you know these you know rural areas suburban areas they would put in these houses he would build houses what have you told me something about like maybe you were drunk you told me like VCR tape or something yeah yeah they also did the you know the, the blockbuster tapes that chain yeah. and then everyone went to DVD the the golf course didn't do well but the lumber yard still does very well and we race stock cars so did we you have grow three up three stack cars comfortable? For, would you say you grew up middle class, comfortable? Yeah, in my town, good. pretty comfortable. Yeah, but my family didn't care anything about. Uh, yeah, I would travel with my grandmother. You know, we went to Jerusalem, Israel. Jerusalem. Yes, yes. She had a girlfriend, Sophie Sophie Goldberg. And you guys went to Jerusalem Sophie together. Sophie Goldman, I mean. Yes, we all went to Jerusalem, Israel, Paris, know, like New York City to see the Christmas tree. 
from upstate, Saratoga, all of that, but they didn't really care about, you know, they weren't like name droppers or anything. Like that. They were more concerned with the lumber yard and people, you know. Interesting. Needing help and going to church. What, My what, father's side too, church every year. What were you like year. in high school? I mean, every weekend we'd go to church. In high school, I was the class clown. Um, I had braces for a while, so you know, I always had chocolate pudding or sardines stuck in my teeth, so it was kind of a turn off at first. Chocolate pudding and sardines, that's what you thought That's of? what I ate for lunch. I would do the chocolate pudding and a can of sardines. What the fuck? Okay, she's either literally just makes shit up as she goes along, or she's really the weirdest human being alive. I was weird and you know, I always wear very short shorts and like socks <laughs> up to here. And this one guy, Pierre, who was like very French or whatever, he was in one of these kind of spin chairs. And I tricked She's him into coming back to my house. She's literally just. Say goodbye to that chair. Say goodbye so, to the chair. So Pierre comes to my house after school and I literally like spun the chair and around him. and then kissed him. Because I wanted to see what that was like. The and poor then you guy. Him? No, no, we didn't have sex for many. I didn't have Where'd sex. Where'd you lose your virginity? Oh, uh, that was a while later. But I wanted to see about, you know, I was pretty assertive. That's all I'm saying. I wanted to see about the kissing business first. When did you stop becoming the class clown? I'm still the class clown. What? Okay, but not like I, I... win every year, but comedian for Bravo TV. Right. For the Housewives. Which is really interesting. You're probably the funniest on Million Dollar Listing. Well, hello. Hello. That's not even a question. I'm probably the second funniest on see, the network after you. See, you can always fall back on Cabralesque. Cabralesque? <laughs> That's that thing I do. The cabaret meets burlesque. Oh, I don't Soft know. burlesque. You never saw me do that and shake it? You have I, to go I, on my OnlyFans page. You're on OnlyFans. You haven't seen that? Do you get naked? Well, I'm on there naked, but it's not like I got naked for OnlyFans. I have clips of myself on the show when they blur out the boobs or the ass. Yeah, we've or seen the, that. Yeah, so I just put you that stuff You get some up. good money for that. Why don't you spread your legs and get yeah, some money? I get paid monthly for that. But the thing is, I don't put that on my main Instagram because I get booked by legitimate, straight-laced brands. Like, I was the cool scoping spokesmodel. You know, I still do a lot of philanthropy, and I have to be able to put a sentence together and be kind of commercial. Interesting. Like, I still do events at the Morgan Library, the LGBTQ. I don't think I'd be on the board of the museum charity. If You know, I don't put the naked stuff on my main Instagram, but I'll put it on OnlyFans if you pay for it. Interesting. How naked will you get? You only have to pay $4.99 a month. To see you butt naked? To see it all. But it's blurred, you know, it's blurred. But if I wear a shirt like this and show cleavage, like I get seventy five dollars. No, but why don't tip. you like just seventy five dollar tips? One guy offered me five hundred dollars to see my feet. I don't really want to encourage that. Why wouldn't you just say, "Here's five thousand Here, dollars"? You will... guys get to see my feet for free because I trust Josh. Let but, me ask but... you a question. Why would you? There's nothing illegal. Why don't you literally just get fucking butt naked and say, "Give me twenty five grand and I'll show you my pussy." I don't know. Everybody's done a sex tape except no. Not. I mean, not like a. We could do one. You know, we could actually. We'd go viral. Let's just do a TikTok to start and see how that goes. Back into monetizing your body because okay. you still look pretty good. Yeah, and there's desperate people out there. There are desperate. Why don't you just get butt naked and charge twenty five grand for you know one shot? You could do that if you go on OnlyFans. You say, you go online and you say, hi, anybody out there that wants to pay 25000 I will send you a private video yeah. of my woo-ha. Woo-ha? But some people want to pay just to see a foot. So <laughs> I start with the foot and see how it goes. I just don't want to, you know, lead these people on. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to invite people over to the townhouse. Okay. All right. Okay. They're going to stay on one side of the curtain. Okay. No, no phones. No phones. I will check, but I'm keeping half the money. Okay, I don't care. You can be there. You're a voyeur right. anyway. I am going to make sure you get free all voyeur cell all the phones time. You are get taken out. They're get... left at the door. You're a voyeur, and you could, you've seen everything for twenty five grand, of which I'm keeping twelve thousand five hundred. I think you should pay me. For she all will the get completely see... naked, and you can sit there and watch for ten minutes. I think you owe me some money, actually, for all the shit I've shown you. You've seen everything. Last night you, you crawled into anything. my bed If for I kept free. a bill of all the money I spent on the, all the years over you, you would literally be able to pay off your townhouse. You copped a free feel last night. You should pay me for that. I didn't make any money on that. You're I just got in Bobby. bed with you naked. Bobby should be doing the work, not me. Oh, my God. Ugh. I'm not even married. Why do I have to hear you okay, snore? Let, 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 let's go there. Why, <laughs> okay, marriage. Yes. Why aren't you married? I've been working, I put my daughter first, and I've been married to well, that house. Down college. I'm, okay. I'm ready to get rid of the house, then I'll be lighter. I'm well, house how about you, maybe you could keep the house if you got married, so why don't we find you a man? 
I would like to get married now that my daughter has her own apartment in Philadelphia and she's a sophomore. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I just need to interview the proper guys. I've been dating guys like... Interview? I've been dating Mr. Right now, not Mr. Right. You know the difference? I got you. So a young 20-something-year-old hockey player is That's great, not, no. but not for marriage. That's on the side, no. Why don't we find Especially you... Especially with a queen-size bed, it's on the side. Yeah. It doesn't fit in my bed when I was at the apartment on Columbus Circle. Well, that apartment was Back in the of... townhouse, so I have the king-size bed. So, yeah, maybe I could get married. So, okay. So, Should I steal Olympia from you? No, she is definitely okay. not coming with you. Okay. Uh, she would not put up with it. So, let me ask you a question. What? Why can't we just find you a husband? Well, I'm, I, I would like to have a husband, and I'm a good wife, as you know. I've been a great wife to you. Look what I did. I spent two hours with you shopping for a place setting for 12 people. You know what I get to? I, I renovated a yacht in three months. I can't be, you know, doing that for I'm sure We need to find, like, a Texas oil billionaire who just wants to spoil. Oh, I love Texans. Okay. And they don't have to be a billionaire. I love Texas. I love Austin, living on the river. The river? Yeah, it's actually called... It's uh, a lake. It's... No, it's called Austin Lake, but it's Colorado River. Oh, see, she I'm really? I'm a lot smarter than I look. It's interesting. Like, I didn't know that. And I, I mean, I could be making money right now if I could get out my Robin Hood account, but that's okay. You're what? You're not on Robin Hood? What is that? Well, listen, I have a stock account, of course, with JPM and also Morgan Stanley. Which, you know, that's my daughter's real, the, the first grandfather is Henry Morgan. Right. You know, JP Morgan, there were two in so long ago. But I do my own trading. When I married Morgan, I knew everything about, I know, it's hot by the fireplace. It's 80 degrees out. What the hell? Jeez. What? Is this just for the ambiance, the look, the aesthetics? Okay. So it is giving me a glow. Uh, yes, I happen to know what's going on in the world. So when I, you know, I knew Morgan for a while before we married, he could talk to me about finance, and I do quite well on Robin Hood. So... We're going to get you with Steve Levitt. That's really important. <laughs> Especially if you're, maybe she really does what she's doing. I mean, it's possible. But if you did, then you would, you would have a lot more money. So, I mean. I got sued for a movie deal and happened to come out of a Chapter 11. Sure. I did it, man. I did it. And I had to get there to get sued. You don't get sued if you don't have money at the end of the rainbow. The rainbow. So that was a new experience for me after my divorce, being on my own without my best friend. And, you know, he was my rock. And I had a lot on my plate. I had a five-year-old daughter. So why why did you guys get divorced? And I went right into reality TV. Why did you guys get divorced? That is something I haven't told anybody. It's not on the show. So it, it, it wasn't a choice here I wanted to make. It happened to us. The bottom just fell out. And after, you know, I spoke to the family and my daughter's school and lawyers and everybody, managers, finance, you know. And we decided the best thing was to divorce at that time. But and it's nobody's business what happened, really. You just tell us what you want and to And everybody tell us. likes to make up stories about it. Don't believe what you hear. Was it? There's no way we would have gotten divorced. We had a wonderful marriage, a beautiful daughter, a beautiful life with family and friends. So it was something neither of us had a choice. Hmm. And uh, it was hard for me to you know, go on by myself like any divorced mom. And especially with all the eggs I had in the, you know, I had so many balls in the air at that time. And in your face. And, and our assets were commingled. We owned houses together in LLCs. Either I owned or he owned or he had mortgages. Oh, it was terrible. Terrible. But I got through it. So was it amicable? Not in the end, because when there's money involved and lawyers, you know, there were a lot of twists and turns. So that's why I just moved on. I didn't get a settlement. I didn't get alimony, child support, or settlement. I just moved on. You got the house? I bought the house. That was my house. He renovated it. And what See, about people don't know all this Sancho Pay I bought. He did renovate that a bit too. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you have this in and out driveway. I didn't have that. I had a driveway that you would come in and out and we'd have a party for 200 people. It was a nightmare. So he dynamited that for me. And that was very expensive. So he did that for me. But my house was cheap. I paid nothing for my house in France, and I sold it for a pretty penny, and that helped me get out of the Chapter 11. Mm-hmm.
what would you be doing now if, if there wasn't had, had there not been Bravo? What do you think? What, where I'd you be would with be? my husband and my daughter and taking care. Oh, you care think you would yeah. still be? Oh, with we'd us? still be together. There's no oh, doubt. Oh, so about would you it. say that the show was an impetus for getting? No, the show came after the marriage fell apart. But had I not lost my marriage and everything I knew at that point, I would have still been married, a mom, and a philanthropist. That's what I did, philanthropy. Okay, and so then how did the show come about? So they came to me. They find you in the shiny sheets, my ex-husband would call that, you know, the social pages where they'd say, oh, Sonia Morgan, because I would always support Prince Albert's uh, Princess Grace thing, because we dated, and he, he met my husband, so we always supported Princess Grace. You dated Prince Albert? Oh, yeah, way before I was married. Really? You didn't know that either. You no. don't remember shit. I tell you stuff. So we would support Princess Grace Foundation. So anyhow, yeah, I was doing all that kind of stuff then. That's what, that, that was the life before I got married. Do you ever get depressed? I, I don't get depressed like uh, like um, I can't get up and do what I need to do. I always am motivated to work because I have my daughter. When you have a kid, that's your motivation to get out of a rut. But I have I do get reclusive at times um, because I'm a very private person normally before and people don't realize how I spend a lot of time. I read constantly, I garden, uh, and spend a lot of time alone. When I was married, in fact, my ex-husband, we, we, we were two loners that like to be alone together. Do you have a shrink? I now have a therapist. You do now? How does that, do you feel? I didn't really believe in all that before, but uh, being very isolated because of the fame that comes with the show, you find a lot of people that just want to exploit you, monetize you, uh, get on the show and sell whatever they're selling. I, I realized I needed to talk to a therapist. Do you ever think you drink too much? I abuse alcohol when I'm filming, and when I feel socially awkward, I'll drink too much. But I don't have an alcohol problem as far as, you know, when I speak to my doctor or I get blood tests. You know, I, I remember when my daughter was younger, I said, I never want to lose my daughter for what appears to be, you know, maybe she drinks too much. So I would do a blood test every two months with this doctor to show that I, I didn't have alcohol, I didn't have drugs in my system, just to be ready and sure. But I've talked about it over the years because I'm a lightweight. So when I do drink, right away I'm drunk with two drinks, I'm a cheap date, you know. When I was married, my husband and I, we'd have a martini at dinner and then half a bottle of red wine and go home. You're in bed at 10 o'clock. When you film the show, you will have a brunch or a lunch and then a dinner and then go to a club and then go back to the house. You're filming and drinking with veteran seasoned drinkers who drink all day and they have a tolerance. Well, see, I get that. I have no tolerance. Well, I mean, yeah, I would say I don't think you have a drinking problem. I think you're a lightweight. Yeah, major but lightweight. But you know what I will say? The one thing about you is I'll never, I tell this to everybody, as crazy as <laughs> as you'll get it. I, I remember one time it was uh, like, 8 a.m. and I found you in the lobby of the Sherry Netherland, ready to have a dinner, like the night before you were blitzed, and the next morning you're sitting there in your pearls, right there, it's like 8 a.m., like I'd seen you at 3 a.m., literally butt naked, I think, with me in a, at the townhouse or whatever, and I left. On the piano. And then, yeah, literally, and then there you are, sitting there. I'm 8 like, a.m. at the Sonia, Sherry for the power breakfast. Sonia, what are you doing? She's like, I'm just I'm meeting Carl Icahn. Oh, I'm meeting Ron Perlman. Oh, I have a meeting with uh, Joe Perella. It was literally incredible. She really is totally functioning, knows her shit, and surprisingly, really, she, she's with it. She's just a wacko, but she's with it. Yeah, okay, okay, I'll just end it with this. If you're a lightweight and you have two drinks and you're falling asleep sitting up or going to bed, you're not gonna have a hangover the next day. You get up, you do your thing. That's true. But if you drink all the time, of course you're gonna be wrinkled, tired, trashed. Tell me something that, that nobody knows about you and tell me something that, how much time do we have? Well, because tell me something that I will tell you because tell my, me something you would never tell someone else interviewing you except for me. Because my daughter is not on the show, people don't realize that I am a good mother and I do complete my business. Everything I book, everything I say I'm going to do, I do. And I think you know that about me. Absolutely. You sit there, you're doing 900 cameras. Whatever it takes to make a buck, you're there, you're doing it. And you, she really does work hard. I have a work ethic. Uh, that maybe people don't see on the show because when I'm on the show I'm with my girls to blow off some steam and have fun and get naked in the pool 
That's what the viewers are tuning in to see, though, who you are behind closed doors. Maybe they don't see my business much. Well, I think there's but a I lot didn't of do cool sculpting for I won't tell you how much. Well, I like this interview coin. because you're saying things that I think maybe other people don't take you seriously sometimes because you're such a wacko, but you really aren't. You, you're really, she, honestly, Thank I love you. her and she is really a good person. She's fucking nuts, but she's a great person. Well, we person. wouldn't be friends all these years if I weren't consistent. No. And you two are very consistent. You do your work, but you know how to have a good time and you know how to laugh at yourself. Well, I just, if anything, I hope this interview will like awaken some people that don't really know the real Sonia and be like, holy shit, she really does. She's not just a crazy person. Well, I mean, we did get the kid insane, in but... Ivy League and she has two jobs lined up for this summer and next yeah, summer. She's got a good Contracts. heart. I love Thank you. Thank you, I love you too. Now get the fuck out of my house. Yeah, I gotta get the fuck out of this fireplace and what's stuck to my leg? Oh, and a little bit, that was, I wanna be paid for that flash. That was some real cheek. Thanks, folks.